again. Oh, we're in Leavenworth, Washington. It's a beautiful blue sky day. It's a little chilly, down close to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, but not too bad. Um, a little bit of snow on the ground. We're staying in a place right on the Icicle Creek. Beautiful location. We brought the cats this time. I'm a little sleep deprived because the younger one, the pure black one, was up most of the night meowing. But um, really happy to be here, really excited to go and find a place to paint. Staying at the All Seasons Inn. We found it on booking.com. Good deal. It's off season, middle of the week. Yeah, a really comfortable room. We got the Yukon suite. Sleighs for sleigh rides. This uh, snowed in road I'm walking along, the snow is solid. I'm not sinking in uh, maybe more than a quarter of an inch. So they've had some cold weather. Beautiful views here. Leavenworth is a replica Bavarian town because the area reminded people of the Alps, the Bavarian Alps. I can see why it's beautiful here. Look how blue those shadows are. Well, I've walked down Icicle uh, Road to East Leavenworth Road and then found this wide open plain with just a beautiful view of these snow covered mountains, blue shadows, some reds and greens in the foreground. So I'm going to set up here and uh, paint this scene. I really need to edit the scene I want to paint. I don't want to be too ambitious or I'll never get finished. So I picked a 9 by 12 panel to paint on. To kind of restrict the size and help me to focus. So I'll get started with the sketch and lay my colors out and update you as we go. As always, thanks for joining me. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe. I like this location because it has a nice flat area to stand. It's got some trees around that will hopefully block the sun while I'm here painting. The sun's going to move and it's going to come uh, across the scene and into my face. So I need to get finished before that happens, but uh, it would be nice to paint in the shade the whole time. I'll give you a quick rundown of my kit. I use an On Plain Air Pro easel, which came with the tripod and the palette. It's all pretty well built and lightweight. Um, it also came with this um, kind of strut here that hooks up easily to the tripod and uh, it'll allow a pretty big pallet although it's such lightweight um, setup that it might tip over in any kind of wind so I usually don't go bigger than 11 by 14 which fits in my 
Raymar wet panel carrier. I have a brush carrier here and I usually pull out a big bristle, a big soft, a little soft, a couple filberts of some different sizes, a big floppy watercolor mop which works good to blend and then another mid-sized um, soft synthetic for blending. Then I have a few palette knives. Got a medium sized small. Both of those are kind of an angle triangle shape and this flat one is works well for large flat masses of water. All those are Italian um, made stainless steel knives work really well. Then I have turpentine and gamsol. I use this to do my initial turpentine wash. I pour a little bit in here in my medium cups with a little bit of liquid. I use this liquid original when I'm working plain air. It really helps the paint to dry quickly um, so I can varnish it and sell it at a, a show if I need to. I don't have to wait for weeks for it to dry. I have these chemical hand warmers. These work really well on a cold day. It's not very cold here. The local Leavenworth people have told me that this winter and, and the past few winters have been really mild and they recognize it as climate change, unfortunately. They're just not getting the snow and the cold temperatures like they used to. I guess we're all seeing that. Got some nitrile gloves, a rag, and then a bunch of paper towels. I usually throw a plastic bag over the back here to throw my garbage in. I don't leave any kind of mess. I'm careful not to spill my paints or my solvents while I'm out here. And uh, yeah, the, the Plain Air Pro kit comes with this backpack. It's really pretty good. It's pretty comfortable. It's well built. I've been using it for almost a year now and yeah, it's, it's working out pretty well. I can fit a bottle of water and a thermos of coffee in there with all my gear and in my Raymar wet panel carrier I usually have three or four um, panels an 8x10, a 9x12 and an 11x14 and I, I usually do a, a third pencil sketch on there which just helps me to get the composition down quickly
Here I am washing the panel with heavily diluted paint. I try to stick with the transparent colors. I try to stay a little lighter and a little warmer than the end scene, uh, meaning I try to stay toward the reds and yellows with this initial wash if I can. Now the sky is a beautiful blue, so I'm not going to stain the sky red or yellow. But the mountains, I'm going to move them a little bit warmer, so a little more toward the red. And the foreground, trees, and the snow even, I'm going to move that just a little bit toward the warm and try to create a nice harmony. So here I'm going to wipe out the lightest lights with a paper towel and if I need to I'll wet a brush or the paper towel with a little bit of turpentine to help remove some of the paint and show the white of the panel again. Okay, so I've got the wash in and I've wiped away the lightest lights where the sun is hitting the snow on the mountains in the distance. I also have the foreground snow wiped away for the most part. Now I'm going to mix up my colors and I'll try to mix up the colors as close as I can matching what I'm seeing out there in the scene, in the but I'm not going to um, go too crazy. I have to move quickly now because the sun is rising and it's uh, starting to shine on my eyes a bit which is closing down my pupils so it becomes harder in this bright light especially with the sun shining on that foreground snow it becomes harder to see colors real clearly so I'm gonna move quickly.
here I want to clean my palette so that I get some really pure blues for some of the bluest shadows on the uh, shadow side of the mountain. I find that the palette knife works really well if you want to put down a dab of brilliant, clean color. It doesn't blend into the layer below as easily. It kind of floats on top if you do it very, very lightly and very carefully. Alright, well, I got to a good stopping point. Um, the light is swinging around, the sun is swinging around to where it's hitting me in the face, um, making it hard to check my colors. So I'm going to call it quits. I got far enough along, I think, uh, to be able to take it back to the studio and to check it out, see what needs to be done with it before I can call it finished. But I'm pretty happy with it. Let me show you what I got. I hope you can see that, and I hope you can hear me over that machinery in the distance. I know there's a lot of backlight, so it's uh, kind of hard to see it. I can spin it around here and show you it uh, with a little more light on it. It's very bright out here, so I'm having a hard time getting a good picture of it. It's pretty loose, um, a lot of loose brushwork, especially in those trees. They're just suggested in these couple houses in the middle ground. And that's what I was after, a, a really loose capture of the scene, really focusing on trying to capture the colors and the composition. As always, thank you for joining me. I really enjoyed being out here under this beautiful blue sky. Uh, some challenges with the sun swinging around on my face but still very nice time um, I'll take it back to the studio this is just the white of the stained panel so far so I'll go ahead and finish painting those white areas that I left them because it, it's pretty close to the, the final color anyway thanks as always for joining me and if you like these videos please like and subscribe